So this grasshopper walks into a bar. Bartender looks up and says, hey, we got a drink named after you. The grasshopper looks kind of odd at him and says, you got a drink named Melvin? Hey, this is John. Thanks for watching my video today. I'm going to be looking at a simple method for adding some weathering to your exhausts. I've got uh, a set of exhausts here from Edward's new Tempest kit, and I've also got one of the exhaust parts from the Citadel Torox kit from Warhammer 40k. I wanted to use both of these because occasionally uh, I've seen on forums and on Facebook groups, and I'll even be asked the question that if someone sees a technique demonstrated in one genre, they may ask, hey, can this be used on another genre? So I thought I'd use both of them just to simply demonstrate that, yes, they can be used, uh, this technique can be used on any genre. And what I'm going to show you is a quick and easy way to do this. Uh, it's, it looks good. It's not a 100% solution if you're really looking for realism. It's just a way to quickly get it done and keep moving with your project. The products I'm going to be using this morning, we're going to give the exhausts a base of a darker silver. I'm going to be using Citadel's Lead Belcher, but you can use whatever color you prefer from any brand. The main thing is you don't want it to be, I don't recommend a really bright silver, but more of a, uh, well, a dark silver. Not quite gunmetal, uh, although you could use that. I prefer not to, but that's what I like to use. Next, I'll be adding some dark brown RLM61 from Model Air. Again, the color is not so much as in, in, important as that it needs to be a dark brown uh, for this technique. Any brand, any color will work. After that, I'm going to apply some light rust and then some yellow ochre. Everything will get a wash of petrol spills from Vallejo weathering effects, but uh, again, you don't need to feel like you've got to use this specifically. This is simply a dark wash. Uh, a dark wash from Army Painter, Citadel Non Oil, any kind of enamel wash, whatever you use. It could be oil, it can be anything. It just needs to be a dark wash. I'll be applying some Tamiya weathering powders. I use these because they're a bit sticky rather than uh, just basic pigments. I like these because they're a bit sticky. They'll cling to the model and I don't have to worry about it falling off as, as I work further with the model over time. But any any soot effect, uh, whether it's pigments or you could even airbrush it. Again, the main thing we're going to go for at the end is some soot effects as you'll see. I've got a order number three round brush. It's a little bit beat up and used, but all we're going to be doing is adding some color to the exhaust as a base layer, so you don't necessarily need your best brush. I have some tweezers. These are the kind that are self-gripping, but any kind of tweezers will do, or you could even use your fingers. And then I've got this nice collection of sponges cut up into little squares, probably half an inch in size one for each color, although you could use a single one and just rotate it around, up to you. And then I have my palette, of course, Mr. Oatmeal Lid, and that's what I'll use to be applying my paints uh, to the model. All right, I'm going to get started. Okay, I've added a little bit of lead belcher to my palette, thinned it down with some water. 
and I'm just going to very quickly and roughly paint the exhausts. I'm not too worried about being neat. I am going to try and get full coverage, but if I don't, I won't sweat it. Again, this is Citadel's non, not known oil, listen to me, lead belcher. I'm still getting over my cold, y'all. And uh, I had to hit the rescue inhaler before I did this. So it's it always makes me a little bit shaky. Uh, a weird feeling. So forgive me if I sound like I'm more out of my mind than usual. <laughs> but anyway, I'm using a lead belcher here. And again, you can use any dark silver paint you want. You can even use gunmetal. I just prefer this color because it's to me it's the right balance between a bright silver and a gunmetal. So it it's it just has the right look to me. That's the beauty of building models really. I heard Bob Ross, the famous painter, talking about this on a recent uh, replay of one of his shows that I was watching. He said when you when you buy your canvas, when you buy your paints, of course talking about the brush, uh, the, the canvas painting world, he said you're given a license, an artist license, and you can do whatever you want. And so I like to think of it that way. When you buy a kit, you buy an artist license. You do whatever you want. If you like the way it looks, do it. But anyway, I've got the uh, lead belcher down. Now, without waiting too long, I clean my brush. <coughs> One other thing I need to mention, there's going to be a lot of jump cuts because I'm still coughing quite a bit. So forgive me for that. I just really wanted to get this video out there. I think it's I think it's a fun technique to use. This is Model Air 71042 Dark Brown RLM61. But again, any darker color will work. I'm not going to thin this because Model Air paint is, in my opinion, thin enough to work with uh, right out of the bottle for brush painting. You can thin it more if you want, but for what we're going to be doing here, it won't be necessary. I've got my sponge and my clip. I'm going to dip it into the paint and then I'm going to offload some of it, a lot of it, onto this piece of paper towel. And then I'm going to go into my exhaust and I'm going to start dabbing it on. I like to go for a bit of a heavier application. Um, because we're going to be laying other stuff down over this. It's thin enough that it's still allowing the lead belcher to show through. It's not completely covering the lead belcher, which is exactly what I want. But it still imparts some color. Now again, you can go heavier, you can go lighter, whatever you prefer. Pick up a little more. I would recommend, if you're using this technique, that you start off with less paint on your sponge. And then if you feel like you need to add more, go ahead and do it. Because it's usually easier to add than it is to take away when it comes to paint. I also didn't allow any drying time. There was a bit of a jump cut there between applying the two colors because I had to clear my throat. But I, I don't let this really dry out very much. Whatever it dries while I'm doing it is sufficient. I don't mind doing the wet on wet technique for this. It just gives us additional color mixes. Alright, next I'll be using this Model Air 71129 Light Rust. Again, the application technique is going to be exactly the same. Put a little on my palette. I'm grabbing a clean sponge here off camera. Now for this color, for the second color, I want to do a little less, and I know that's very subjective to say it that way, but I want to do a little less of this color than I did the other one because since it's much brighter, 
it will take over things very quickly if you're not careful. So I'm just going to put this on and there's a certain level that I'm looking for. Here's another trick. If you're doing aircraft exhausts or anything where there's going to be a, an upside and a downside, kind of like in space balls, um, do go in first on the downside. So if you don't like it, you can just make this the upside and it, it'll be disguised a little bit. Um, it's just another way of working fast. I'm going to apply this on there. There's no pattern. There's no, there's no magic method. Just put the paint on. Then I'm going to go right into my yellow ochre. Get a drop of that on the palette. All right, I've got my a clean sponge again. And I'm going to do the same application method, but again, as with the previous color, I'm going to be going for even less of this. Um, subtlety is the key with this one. Because again, it, it will take over if you're not careful. Now, you can also be too subtle as I was there and not get anything it looks like. So, be aware of that. All right. There's that one. Let's get this guy done. And you notice, I'm leaving a lot of paint behind here. I'm not using that much paint. Uh, this is a very minimalist type of work. There. That works for me. Now, I haven't allowed really any drying time. You can. There's nothing that says this has to be done without drying time. I just want to demonstrate that it's not absolutely necessary. I'm using... Uh, from the weathering effects line from Vallejo, petrol spills 73817. Now, this is designed to simulate, obviously, petrol spills, but one of the cool things I noticed about it working on my Tempest model is this behaves exactly like Citadel's Known Oil Gloss, uh, which is a great product. I use it a lot and I, I love it. I never thought I would find anything I liked better. Weird thing is, I tested it, this, alongside the Citadel Non-Oil Gloss, and they behaved exactly the same, looked exactly the same. Um, the difference, this has about 14 more uh, milliliters in it, and it's about a dollar less. Now, I know that's not a huge amount, but as fast as I go through paints, when I buy a reload of uh, a resupply of paints, it's a pretty sizable chunk. So if I can find a way to shave off a dollar per bottle of paint and get more, um, that can mean a savings of 10, 15, even $20 at a time, which is huge for me. So anyway, if you've not tried this, it's a good, good uh, product to use. I dropped a little shaker ball in there just so I can make sure it's stirred up good. And all I'm going to do is get a little of this on my palette. Now it's a fairly thin product to start with. But I'm going to grab some water from my coffee cup here and thin it even more because we're going to slop this all over. And by having it a little thinner, it lets us control how much of it we have on the model a little better. Now when I say I'm slopping it on, I mean, you, you notice it's covering up those holes in the middle. I'm going to go back through and punch it out to make sure that it doesn't stay that way. But I'm not being neat about this. I want it to darken things down. It will help mix the colors. It will help blend everything together. It'll help shade the recesses nicely. We just apply it all over. Well, I just apply it all over. You will too eventually. <laughs> a 
like I said, this works. I've used the Army Painter uh, shades, Citadel shades. This works exactly like them, but there's more in the bottle, which you do what you want to do, but that's an easy decision for me. All right. Look for any obvious pooling or any areas that you missed or any areas that you want to add a little more. And when you're happy with it, we'll call that step done. Okay, the only stage in this that I'm going to allow everything to dry up a little bit is after I've applied the wash. And I do that simply because I think the powders, the, the uh, pigments go down a little better if the surface is dry. You don't have to. You can apply it wet. It's just my preference. So I'm going to give this, it'll only need about 5-10 minutes to dry. And then I'll come back and apply the, the powders and talk about some options and variations that you can do and we'll wrap this up. Okay, I've added a little bit of paper tissue here just to protect the workbench or workbench, whichever you use, <laughs> from the powders. These are my Tamiya weathering powders. There are many like them, but this one is mine. Um, <laughs> I like using a Q-tip or cotton bud, depending on your region, to apply these. Uh, one, I tend to wear these little brushes out really fast. They die quickly. But I also like the way they apply a little better. And all I'm going to do is put some of this black soot right on the tips of the exhausts. And there's no right amount or wrong amount. You can make it as sooty or not as you want. Your call. Whatever you think looks good. Because the goal in this, my goal, is not absolute realism, but a nice pleasing effect overall so that when somebody looks at this their brain thinks oh that's an exhaust that's seen a lot of heat go through it that's all I'm wanting let me just knock it back a little bit to introduce some randomness now I'll do the Torox exhausts probably gonna go in probably going to that's the inhaler speaking I, I'm still a little jittery I'm going to go in a little heavy on this one because 40K is all about grim dark, so let's make this grim dark. Or dark grim. Although I think it would be kind of funny to paint up some space marines as Teletubbies, but that's just me. That's right, 40K fans. John Bias at gmail.com. That's me. <laughs> All right, so I've added those on, and I'll call that good enough. Now you see the powder that fell down there. That's, that's why I put this down. I know it probably throws the white balance out, but this stuff will take over your workbench in a heartbeat. It's the modeler's version of glitter. If you've ever been to a craft store, there's glitter all over the floor, everywhere. You walk out and there's glitter on your shoes. It's that way with this stuff. So let me move this out of the way. And we'll call these puppies done. I don't know if you can see that. Very clearly, but these will work. That's the look I'm going for. Okay, that pretty much does it. I'm going to call these ready to be mounted on the model. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this goes for more of a rust look to the exhausts. If you're not wanting them to look rusty, you can introduce other colors and use the exact same method. For example, if you wanted to give it more of a heat weathered look and less of a rust weathered look, 
you would use some dark blue, maybe some dark red, maybe a darker rust, but to kind of give it that bluish, purplish look that some exhausts will get when they're when they've been heated repeatedly over time. Uh, you can go in with a darker base coat than than I did. I've even at this stage I've even gone back with in this case lead belcher or your silver color and sponged on bits of that to make more of the metal poke through so you kind of bring it up and then knock it back a little bit I'm sure that the technique would work fine if you started with your dark base then went through the rusts then added the silver so it would give you a much heavier rusted look and less of an undertone of the silver so the the number of ways that this can be applied i i, I don't want to say it's infinite because as buzz lightyear knows <clears throat> buzz lightyear also as buzz lightyear knows um, infinity and beyond that, that's a lot of stuff but <laughs> There's there's a lot of ways of of using this simple technique using a few sponges and I know it's it's taken a little longer because I'm doing this on a video But normally I get this knocked out in less than 10 minutes Sometimes as fast as five minutes if I'm not worried about colors mixing and the wash mixing and and uh, Other factors some additional things you can do you could come back with I, I've done this I've taken just a mechanical pencil and I've just poked in a few details just to get just to impart some of that uh, graphite shine to it now you will want to do that after you've done any matte coating or anything like that because if you put some graphite down and then you matte coat over it it loses a little bit of shine uh, so it won't it won't have the appearance uh, that, that that product can bring to the model but that that's it. That's my exhaust. A quick and simple method that is not a perfect method by any means, but it's, it's easy to do and it's easy to replicate. And for my purposes, it's easy to demonstrate. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I'd especially like to thank the kind folks who support me on Patreon. If you're not already doing that and would consider doing so, I'd appreciate it. Also, check out my blog if you haven't done that, johnbias.com. And I'm also on Facebook, John Bias Scale Models. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Always enjoy the hobby. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.